Good morning, Bellingham. It's nice to have you on here, Friday, June 5th, 2020. A little bit out of my favorite movie, Good Morning Vietnam with Robin Williams. Robin Williams. That's right. So today we've got some special guests, uh, members of our senior class of 2020 um, are here today to visit with us. Beth uh, is going to have a conversation with them toward the end of this broadcast. So really happy you're all here. Remember, today is the big senior uh, parade beginning at 1 o'clock at the high school. We'll give the details a little bit later. But next, I want to turn it over to, to Bruce, who's going to share the, the latest numbers with you. Good morning, everybody. Filling in for Mark, who's uh, taken a day well-deserved. Um, in Massachusetts, there are 102,063 total cases, of which uh, there were 7,201 deaths. Um, we have tested 621,248 patients. Um, and in, in, the, in the United States, the uh, total cases are 1,842,101 total cases with a total of 107,029 deaths. Um, that would, number represents about 470 cases from yesterday, which is, you know, the numbers are dwindling, we're looking good. Um, other than that, it's, you know, well, pretty, you know, things are, things are trying to level out and get normal here. Um, we're looking to hear from the governor Saturday at two o'clock. He's going to mention the phase two opening for everybody. So hopefully he has some favorable news for us. If not, I'm, um, I'm going to relocate to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I think the news is getting better and better. Actually, this morning I heard jobs report early, uh, 2 million new jobs in the month of May, which is usually we're on this decline. And now it starts to look like we're on the upswing. So two million new jobs is actually people see some positive trends going yes, on. Yes, definitely. Now we're all, uh, good news. Um, I want to turn it over to Esther, our public health nurse, to provide us with an update. Good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. As of this morning, we have had 887 residents tested with a total of 138 confirmed cases. Currently, we have 11 active cases with 116 cases recovered and a total of 11 deaths. Uh, so those numbers are really moving toward our favor, aren't they, Esther? When you look at the recovery numbers and the amount of new cases, I would say that we're tr we've been trending in a good direction for a while, but it just seems like this last week it's improved dramatically in fewer new cases and in fewer active cases. I think a lot of it's attributed to the people who finally got the, the idea or the hang of you know, wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's still out there, you know, if you wear your mask and, you know, in some cases wear the mask and the gloves, um, that's going to limit any potential, you know, even if somebody has it, it's going to limit, you know, the, the potential of spreading it. So I, I think we're all doing a good job. Um, for the most case, I've seen people wearing their mask, which is, you know, a good thing. Yeah. I haven't had to really respond to too many complaints about people not wearing a mask or not wearing it properly. Many of our residents know that uh, our board of health and our board and the LPC, we are out ahead of all the other towns by, you know, asking everyone to wear masks out in public. And I think that act helps you know, slow things down dramatically here in the town. So, uh, and compliments to the board, all the board, anticipated police and fire. Um, it wasn't easy. We were ahead of the curve there. It wasn't easy, but it was a, looking back, it was the right thing. Great. Esther, do you have anything else to add? No? no, just like Bruce said, things keep uh, looking as though they're trending in the right direction. Just keep wearing your mask, keeping your distance, and you're really going to discreet, decrease your risk of exposure just by doing that. Great. So now I'm going to go over to, to Dennis. And yeah, we actually have a question for Esther. Um, Esther, are the limits for gatherings still 10? I know this may change in a day or two, just checking for tomorrow and the weekend. Yes, as of right now, the, the limit for gatherings is still 10. All right. Let's emphasize, Dennis, that's in a public place, correct? I mean, what you do in your backyard, even though you should take precaution, but with family members, what, what's your thought there? Bar I know people are starting to barbecue more, getting together. I actually saw yesterday driving around town some folks at the end of a cul-de-sac, you know, probably 10 families, all properly spread apart and just talking with one another. 
What do you, that, that yeah, okay? so that's actually supposed to be for confined spaces. Right. Um, you know, un unfortunately, they do still consider your backyard to be a confined outdoor space, um, which I, I would not necessarily agree with 100%. Um, mm -hmm. You definitely want to make sure that you're taking the, the necessary precautions. Um, somebody technically could call and report you if you have more than 10 people in your backyard. Um, so just keep that in mind. It, okay. it does apply to your backyard gatherings. The, the big important thing is the social distancing. If you Correct. can maintain six feet between all of your company, that's preferred. If not, please, you know, wear, wear your mask. Although when it comes to eating, it's not so easy to wear your mask, so. Mm -hmm. Right, when you're eating and drinking, you know, you, you just want to be careful and continue to take the necessary precautions that you can take. Okay. All right. Thanks, Esther. We, we do have a, a few updates. So the lake okay. is opening tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Um, the splash pad and the playground will not be open, but the lake will open at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Passes are not required. They go on sale online and at the DPW on Tuesday. We have an election on Tuesday, but our town clerk is here, so I'll let him speak to that. Um, yep. Restaurants opening on Tuesday as well. The board of are meeting Monday night, and they are going to be approving uh, or going to be holding public hearings. Yeah, and I expect that they'll be following the recommendations of that have uh, reviewed the opening plan. So I, I think uh, Jim Cupper was heading that committee that, that there are nine restaurants that will have petition. That's correct. For Mm -hmm. Outdoor eating beginning on Tuesday. So that'll be great. I know a lot of people are going to the island and taking the outdoor eating there. So it'll be starting in, in Bellingham on, on Tuesday, which is which is great news. We also have a uh, parade, graduation parade here in Bellingham today. And I know we have some seniors we're going to be talking to, but the parade begins. It's a car parade, uh, fire and police escort, about 120 vehicles are expecting. It begins at the high school at one o'clock. Mm -hmm then proceeds down Blackstone Street and north on Maple Street up to Stalbrook School. From Stalbrook School, it then proceeds on 126 all the way to the Petro School, right through the town center, right down 126, past the shopping plazas, down 126 to the center of town, and then down 126, uh, which is also referred to as South Main Street, all the way to the Petro Elementary School, where it will end. So we're asking people to be out on the street, signs, bells, whatever. Well, yeah. um, grad congratulating our senior class. That's great. No, I, I had driven around town last night when we just see how things were, and there were a number of families along South Main Street that were actually putting out big 2020 signs, all kinds of stuff yep. going on. So it's really exciting uh, that the whole community is really getting involved. Hope that we many of our, our adult seniors um, out there along the, in front of the senior center on Blackstone Street, to wave a flag or say hello, that'd be a lot of fun too. I know that uh, Joseph's put out senior strong t-shirts. We're hoping we can get some of them with their senior strong. Well, our town clerk's here. Yes, you want to get that update? So yes, uh, Larry Pizzato, our town clerk's here to provide an update on the upcoming election Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Larry. We're back again. Um, yes, the election is going to be Tuesday. The hours are 12 to noon. I mean, I'm sorry, 12 noon until 8. Repeat that, 12 noon eight. until 8. Okay. And um, we will be doing things a little bit differently this year because we are going to be recognizing um, our distancing. We have masks available. Um, for workers, we will also have a limited number of masks available. Um, and We'll do the best we can to get it done. Right. I'm pretty well. I know that a lot of precaution has gone in, a lot of planning, thought with the Board of Health and, and um, safety, um, fire and police. So I know Larry's done a really good job. So for those folks out there that are concerned, um, please be concerned. That's good. But I know that we have as a town taking really uh, wonderful precautions uh, to make sure that you get out and exercise your right. Please, everyone else there that is a registered voter, we encourage you to get out. It's an important uh, vote. We've got a contested race. Uh, we also have the uh, prop and half question that's going on. So please. I just want additional note. Um, we are sending out a batch of absentee ballots today for every form that we do. Application we've been so far. Um, we cannot guarantee that there's enough time now, but if you still want to send in 
email would be the best way to do it. Um, your application, fine, we will mail it, but we cannot guarantee that get there in time. Mm -hmm. um, but if it were to get there on Monday or Tuesday, have it to PM on Tuesday. The best thing to do then would be to hand deliver it, put it in the recovery Great letter. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Just one more uh, item before we get sure. to our, our senior class. The local emergency planning committee continues to meet every morning at nine o'clock. Virtually, but we have the group together. We're, we're obviously getting updates mm -hmm. on on any issues uh, locally or throughout the region that continue to happen. And mm -hmm. good to let the residents know that that we are doing everything that we can to stay yeah. on top of COVID issues and any other issues come up during the course. But then, Dennis, that's a really good point. As I said, very. Of work and being ahead of the curve, having these meetings every morning at 9 a.m., which I've been able to participate in a number of them, um, really with all the department heads, we get to show that um, there's a constant collaboration and constant communication among the department heads. Um, and, and that really shows the strength of the also was the, why we're doing this. Nine restaurants on Tuesday. Planning is a lot of thought that's going on behind the scenes. You can see it, but believing there's a lot of work. I really thank everyone, all the board members. So, without uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Beth Cornell Smith, our Director of Human Resources. Beth had a wonderful idea. We were talking one day and um, asking how the seniors were doing. We talk a lot about our senior citizens, but not a lot about our senior class and how they're handling. So, Beth suggested that we bring in some seniors. Um, to have a conversation so you can get to know some of the seniors and, and really the impact it's had on them. So, Beth? Thank you. Good morning. Good to have you here. We are experiencing something that none of us have, and it certainly is changing the future for you, for us. And as we were discussing earlier, you are the generation that's going to fix what's going on now. No pressure. Yeah, it's okay. What I'd like to do is have each of you come up, introduce yourselves, and tell us what you what your favorite things were in school and where you're going in the fall. And briefly just tell us what major impact is that this has happened to you. Okay, so we'll start with Kayla. Right here. Um, hi, I'm Kayla Martinez. I've been the class president for the last four years. I've played volleyball and softball, been a part of a bunch of different clubs at VHS. Um, next year, I plan on going to Penn State and I am studying biology. Um, this, these last couple months, they've been pretty hard. I mean, it's impacted the class of 2020. Like, if you weren't one of us, then you wouldn't even like understand what we go through. And like when it comes up to a day to be like, oh, this was supposed to be our prom, this was supposed to be this day. It's been like difficult, but um, we talked earlier and it's just been good to stay positive and that's helped us a lot, but it has impacted us a great deal. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kim Rodriguez. Um, I am the class of 2020 uh, Um I participated in soccer and softball on all teams, and I was captain my senior year of soccer. Um, I was also part of NHS. Um, the pandemic has really affected us. I definitely miss um, it because I Always, um, I feel like we were always on the strongest, and we always had a bunch of fun. Um, for, yeah. for us to not be able to do that, but it's really tough. That one, we decided to set a new all of the small time. Um, <laughs> 
Is your class been able to communicate to class officers and whatnot over the last couple of months with the virtually? Um, I'm not a class officer, but um, with my friends, we've been Thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kayla Lamb. I'm, I'm also a member of NHS and student council. Um, next year in fall, I'm planning on attending the um, this pandemic has really impacted and very close to them. It's like just a very bonding moment of our class, and I feel like the class can make me really miss out on And like, we have a really bad connection to get together. I would say we'll be able to do that in our class, but I feel like we have a really bad chance to be together as a class and celebrate our culture. Concerned about um, the fall and, and uh, whether or not schools are going to open? Definitely, that's a huge concern. I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to dorm or commute because <laughs> my roommate are still talking and trying about it. So I'm going to be away from my house. So, yeah, for me, I'm still kind of, you know, I don't know what's up in here right and now. And they haven't decided yet? Um, uh, they said that they're allowing people to roam, but uh, I think that it's really only for me to come there. Into the next hour, so this is the way to Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Brandon Murphy. I'm a at DHS. Uh, I was a captain of the football team in the uh, Also, the NHS president and the captain. Uh, I was also involved in the student council. Uh, the thing I think I'll miss the most about uh, I was really big into sports, but also going to sports games. Uh, just about every sports game I was at, no matter the outcome, just I was always glad to go. I'm going to be attending the University of New Hampshire uh, in the fall, try to hopefully major in business. And um, one thing this pandemic uh, has kind of done for me is maybe see the Right now, it's tough not to see my friends and miss out on some students. In the grand scheme of life, I'm going to look back and be kind of learn from that I think myself will not All right, well, I was just wanting to have a little bit of and see what your plans are, how all this pandemic. And environment, everything that is affecting So, one of the things I like to know is who has younger siblings? What I want to know is if you were trying to work with someone younger, trying to understand this, you're old enough to understand what's going on. What, do you, what was what's your impression of what you how? A younger child, what's going on and how they can cope with it. I would just try to tell them to like, I try to explain to my best abilities what this is like. Because it's going to be hard for a younger kid to understand why they can't go and see their friends now or why um, they can't go to school. Because you, you could try to explain it to them to the, your best, but they still wouldn't understand it. They just want to be able to see their friends go to school because as a kid it's just it's fun to go and um but I would just always try to tell them to stay positive and that just think in a few months this will all be over. well not in a few months but eventually it will all be over and just think of what you can do once it's over what what you and your friends can do once you're able to see them. try to stay positive um I would just tell them that if they don't understand what's going on, it's for the greater good and greater outcomes because once this goes away, it'll be better for us to um, 
be able to see each other and not in the school. Then we'll be seeing each other and getting to I would say like not to be selfish during this time, making sure you have to do that. You know, whether it's getting supplies and trying to figure out your story or what you're doing or that you're taking care of yourself also. Friends and all that thing, so make sure you're self from the favorite people. My personal experience with this I was in the dump the night the other day and um, drive there. I've never had someone pay it forward, but twice in the same week I've had two people pay it forward. That's just an example of like how like you know this entire pandemic has like really like, people have really truly random acts of kindness. I mean I continue to Uh, the biggest thing is we're just optimistic. And uh, this is temporary, temporary that things are going to be different soon, hopefully better. Um, and that it's going to be another day. Uh, the next day, day by day. Quick, I think that the four of you were a good example of what class of 2020 is and the good that Bellingham has done. And the next generation and what to follow moving forward. It shows what a caring town the belly hand is. It'll always, always be in your heart, and uh, you'll come back. So, congratulations. I wish that it was different, but this is a new world, and you guys are forging ahead. And you're going to teach us how to do this and how to through things that we've never experienced. Really excited about the parade. So have fun, full of horn, and all that fun stuff. Congratulations. Yeah, this Thank is you. one thing I wanted to mention to all the kids before they leave, and we know it's been challenging times, but as we discuss as board members a lot, we're making decisions. We've never been faced with a pandemic. We've never been Decisions that are being made on behalf of the students, on behalf of the residents, are fluid. I mean, we don't know if we're making the right decision, but I can tell you the decisions that we're making have have you at the forefront of all of our decisions. And I believe that, as Beth said earlier, um, we started your generation, this class of 2020. You know what you've lost, but you also know what you can gain. You have now a base. That whenever you're challenged with a difficult situation, you have this base to think back on. You have that foundation. None of us here, the adults, have had that foundation. So I think that you know we've all had challenging situations. So take what you've learned, take that emotion, as you said, you turn into something positive, and move that forward. Uh, and whenever you, uh, whatever decisions or challenges you come across in your future, what a nice. Congratulations to all of you. It hasn't been easy. As a parent of a senior, I know uh, firsthand, but I'm sure all of your parents probably have felt the way I've felt at times. We only want the best, best for everybody. So good luck. And when you're in the parade today, keep your car social distance to be safe. Um, it's really important that we don't ride one another's bumpers. I know it's fun. And you'll be cheering and doing all this good stuff. But the last thing, the biggest, one of our biggest concerns. Not so much the social distance, the mask is the car social distance because when you have 100 plus right. cars, it can be very easy, easily distracted because you're cheering and beeping the horn. So please, even if it takes two hours, we don't care. We prefer you be real safe, okay? Thank you. Thanks for coming great, in. Great, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And in closing, Mark always says to everybody, be safe. And for God's sake, wash your hands. Thank you. Take care. Great job, guys.